Hey, what's up, everyone? Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to. Um, <clears throat> sorry, it's still morning. It's like six twenty-two. So you know how we do this. So um, I wanted to record a um, video lecture of the um, one point six C and D notes, and um, just please follow along with me for this recording. And then when I ask you to pause. Make sure you pause and uh, work out some of those problems, especially for section um, C when we talk about mitosis and mitotic index. So I'm gonna quickly screen share and then start with this um, lecture. If you have any questions, um, let me know. Or Thursday and Friday, I'll have the Zoom meetings again um, because um, today, which is two, then tomorrow I'll be moving. So uh, let me quickly get the screen share going. And let's see, okay, so um, if you turn to 1.6, because we finished um, 1.6 um, A and B, we're gonna be on C. So your slides are attached and uh, you wanna open those. Um, you're gonna go to this section. If you need to um, pause me and go there, uh, right now, please do so. Um, once you're there, you're gonna start off looking like this. Um, when you click next slide, um, I wanna quickly um, go through these slides and then um, hopefully you guys are following along, okay? All right, so the first thing is um, a mitotic index basically is um, you're gonna have a picture or a slide uh, especially on the IB exam, um, it's going to be usually a picture um, of something like this or similar to this. And um, you're going to calculate the cells that are going um, through mitosis only. So you, whatever you see in the picture, if you see a cell in the picture, you're going to look at it and um, you're going to try to figure out, is this cell in mitosis, remember mitosis is prof, uh, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. If the cell is in mitosis, then you put it in the numerator, as you guys see here. So a cell in mitosis, any of these phases. So if a cell is in prophase, you put it, you add it to the numerator. If a cell is in uh, metaphase, anaphase, or telophase, you add them to the numerator. Okay, then those numbers or the, the number of those cells goes in the numerator. The total number of cells, so the cells that you look at on the slide or in the picture, you're going to count them, the total number overall, okay? All the cells in the picture or in the slide, and you're going to put them in the new, uh, denominator, okay? So only the cells in mitosis, any of these phases, go to the numerator, and all the cells in the picture or in the slide go in the denominator, okay? So really quickly, a cell that is an interphase, I wanna quickly do this so you guys understand. A cell in interphase is not part of mitosis. Remember, interphase is not part of mitosis. And you can go back to the slides, to sections A and B to kind of review that. But if a cell is an interphase, interphase is not part of mitosis, okay? So only cells in, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase go in the numerator, and that's mitosis. That's why it's called the mitotic index, okay? All right, so let's take a look at the next slide. Uh, let me quickly go to the next slide. So you see this picture, okay? Um, I want you to pause, okay? And I want you to quickly calculate all the cells that you see so the first thing I do is I calculate all the cells that I see. So if you look at these cells, you see how you don't really see a full cell here? You do not calculate those. Only when you see a full cell. So you wanna start calculating all the cells. Okay, so the total, and the total is going to then go into the denominator, okay? So that's the total number of cells you see fully. Then you're gonna go back and each cell you wanna ask yourself, is this cell an interphase? If you say yes, then you don't count it, okay? 
If you say no, then you're going to ask yourself, okay, which phase is it in? Is it mitosis phase, um, prophase, mitosis, metaphase, anaphase, or telophase? Okay, so when I look at this cell here, and then when I'm done with it, I just go to the next one. Okay, so make sure you don't lose track. So go ahead and pause, all right, and give it a shot. And um, we'll come back in a few minutes. And uh, so pause me, and you do this. And then when you're done, or you think you're done, you're going to go ahead and um, click me back on, okay? All right, so I hope you um, did this work. I wanna quickly grab paper and pencil, and I'm gonna do this actually with you guys, okay? So the first cell, okay, so first I said, we're gonna calculate the total, okay? So let's calculate the total. Um, if you look, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, that's my first row. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. So I have a total of 34. Hopefully you have something really close to that. And that's my total number of cells. So that goes into the denominator, okay? So 34 total. Then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna say, all right, what does each cell, what phase is it in? So if I look at the first cell, um, let's go to the other one. Um, give me a second. I wanna try spotlight. Okay. So if you guys look at the first cell, oops. So the first cell, um, you guys um, see that um, it is actually in um, interphase. So it's not part of metaphase, prophase, prophase, metaphase. So this is not part of mitosis, okay? This cell here is also not part of any of the four mitosis stages. So that one's going to be x out. oops. Sorry guys, so not that one, no, that one, no, that one, also no. Now I get here, I see two cell nuclei kind of forming here. There's two nucleus, right, this big circle. So that tells me that this cell is about to start dividing and actually is towards the end of mitosis, which is gonna be um, in the telophase. So I count this as one, telophase in the numerator, I put one, then this cell, very similar to that one. That one's also, I would say, is in telophase. So that's two in the numerator. This one here is definitely dividing. This is DNA starting to supercoil. Um, so I would say this is um, about in the prophase. So that's three in the numerator. Okay, this cell here um, looks like it's in interphase. I'm not gonna count it. This cell looks like it's in telophase because it still has two nuclei and they're gonna start dividing. So I'm gonna count that. So that gives me four so far. This is interphase, don't count it. This is another telophase, so I'm gonna count that. That gives me five in the numerator. I'm done with this row. Then I go down here. This really um, starts to look like it's in, it's going into mitosis, but it's not fully having this super dark condensed DNA like this. So I'm not going to count that. This one though, I am. This one, it's in. Let me give you six. It looks like it's an anaphase because chromosomes are being pulled apart. A for anaphase apart. Seven. This one looks like it's in two phase. It has two nuclei. That's eight. This one, telophase. That's telophase. That's telophase, and that's telophase. So these big four in the middle, I'm gonna count as well. So when I add 
four. That gives me 12 so far. This one is still in the anaphase. They're being pulled apart. They're not all the way in the other hand. Give me 13. Two. That's two anaphase. Another one goes in the numerator. That gives me 14. This one I don't count. That's interface. This one I count. That's 15. That's in telophase. This one's also kind of in telophase. You see a lot of big nuclei and oxygen. That's 16. Same thing for this one. That's 17 in the numerator. This one also, kind of weird how one has a huge nucleus, the other one is very small. Maybe something went wrong there as far as like cell um, mutations or something, but we still count it because it has two nuclei, so that means it's in telophase. Okay, so that gives us 18. This one does not count because it looks like it's starting mitosis, but it's not in any of the stages. So I would not count that one, okay? Let's jump into here. Similar story between this one and this one, but this one looks like it's getting into mitosis, but it's not in any of the phases, so I won't count it. This is an anaphase because they're starting to be pulled apart. So that's gonna give me 19. This is definitely in <clears throat> the um, prophase part. So that's gonna give me 20 in the numerator. Similar story here, that's prophase. That's gonna give me 21. This one has three nuclei. Definitely something wrong going on here. Um, but we do count it in the mitotic index due to the fact that it's probably in telophase, even though one of these has an extra nuclei here. Um, so we would count that, 22. It's just maybe a bad picture, but we're going to still do this. This is an interface. We're not counting that. Interface, not counting that. This is going to then be in telophase because there's two separate nuclei, so we'll count that. So I have in the numerator, or cells, total cells in mitosis out of this whole picture as 23. And total cells in the entire picture, that's going to be uh, 34. And 34 is in the denominator, and 23 will be in my numerator. Okay, so then what you do, you just divide the numerator by the denominator. Easy math, so you can get your calculator out. And hopefully when you divide it, 23 divided by 34, you're going to get a zero point something. Usually my total index are going to have a zero point something number okay for me i got zero point six seven six and then there's a bunch of numbers after that but you could just put zero point six seven uh, six or uh, zero point six eight if you want to round but give me at least two um digits after the decimal point okay so that's how you do the mitotic index okay so if you did something wrong just pause then go back and try to follow um, what I was trying to uh, show you, and maybe you can kind of see where you went wrong, okay? Let's move on. This is another picture of um, the mitotic index. Um, so what, this is for practice. So what you're going to do, okay, uh, if we were in a classroom, you would see that we would color them. So I would give you this sheet, and you would color prophase phases in blue, Metaphase phases in green, anaphase in orange, telophase in red. So you would actually get a copy of this and color them. But we're obviously not going to do that now. But we will, what we will do is we will actually calculate the mitotic index. So what you want to do is you want to pause me right now. And you want to um, go ahead and complete this um, by calculating the mitotic index. Remember, you want to calculate all the cells you see, okay, fully. This one I would count for sure because you can kind of see what they're doing. But see these little parts of the cells here? I would not count those. I would definitely not count that. So you don't see the entire cell, so you can't tell. I would um, also not count this one here, okay? Or, or, um, or this one, or this one, okay? Just to make sure you can see what the chromosomes are doing. So go ahead and pause me now. Um, you, if you want to print this and do the colors, that's cool. If not, that's all right. So just do the mitotic index. If you want to do it with colors, you'd probably need to print it. Um, if you don't, then just pause, calculate first of all, all the cells, the total cells. That goes in the denominator. 
and then go through each cell calculate and ask yourself it, which phase is it in? If it's an interphase, it does not count in the numerator. If it's in prophase, metaphase, anaphase, or telophase, or any phase of the mitosis, right, those four, then you count it for the numerator. Okay, so please pause me right now and um, do that, okay? All right, so hopefully you uh, were able to do that. It might have been a little bit hard or kind of took you long. Um, if you got frustrated, um, that's all right. Just hopefully you kept going. Um, but let's quickly go through this and see, okay? So when you look at the actual um, answers here, what, um, uh, what you would do is you obviously would calculate the total, okay? So um, you would say, Okay, the total, right, when they, you see them calculated, they kind of did it kind of weirdly, but they calculated um, all the cells and 20 that were in um, any of the mitosis phases. There were 20, as you can see in green, um, and then 55 were not. So if you add 20 plus 55, you're going to get um, 75. So that was their total. There's 75 cells that you can see. Okay, um, and then if you if you went through like you were supposed to, you would see that this one here, right, would count in for the numerator because it's in anaphase. This would be prophase, telophase, prophase. Uh, these chromosomes are lined up in the middle. That would be metaphase, prophase, anaphase because they're being pulled apart, prophase because the chromosomes are dark, um, and they're starting to spread out. Right, you see the difference between a prophase and interphase. Interphase, all the chromosomes are tucked under one little circle. Okay, then um, you would see that these wouldn't count. This is um, prophase, anaphase. These two are separate cells. So if you made that mistake because you didn't see that line, that's okay. But there is a little line there. These are two separate cells. Okay, these are not counting. This is um, anaphase, anaphase, metaphase, anaphase, anaphase, prophase prophase, um, metaphase, anaphase, prophase. So totally there were 20. If you were a little bit off, just make sure you kind of see where you went wrong. That's okay. Um, so there were 20 in mitosis, any stages of mitosis, there were 20 and 55 that were not. So totally there were 75. So when you, what you do is you take 20, okay? And you, oops, sorry. You um, divide that by 75 and you should get 0 0.267. So just check your work. Okay, but that's how we do the mitotic index calculations. Um, this next slide here is just to show you um, the colorations, right? Or interphase cells look like this sometimes. Prophase would be where the DNA condenses. Metaphase is going to be where chromosomes are in the middle. Anaphase, chromosomes are pulled apart. Telophase are kind of already pulled apart and become two separate cells. Okay, so that was C. Uh, we're going to do D as well. D will be a little bit less calculating, obviously. So we're going to talk about sumer, uh, tumors. Well, that was weird. We're going to talk about tumors and how cells are responsible for that. And the fact that tumors are actually uncontrolled cell division. So that's why it's in the cell division section. Okay. So <clears throat> what you see is um, the regulation of the cell cycle is very important. Okay. Um, so organisms survive. Um, or die if their cell cycles, um, depending on how their cell cycles function. So if the cell cycle goes rogue, it can, the organism eventually can die. So, but usually the body tries to keep it under control, but sometimes it does, um, you know, go rogue and um, it can result in cancer. This is a cool picture. Stage zero, right? The cancer stage zero, just a little bit of growth, cell division, just a bunch of cells dividing. Stage one, stage two, stage three, stage four. So when you guys hear like, oh, they had stage three cancer, this is kind of like the size of their growth, okay? Or the size of the uncontrolled cell growth. These are tumors or and then they determine the stages by the size of those tumors. This is a blood vessel or, no, sorry, this is a intestine, um, like a large intestine or small intestinal um, picture here. So that's what you guys see, okay? Um, let's move on. So tumors are going to result, or the way tumors are formed and are basically something in the cell division uh, messaging or machinery goes bad, it goes rogue, right? So it's uncontrolled cell division and mitosis. This causes a bunch of extra cell tissue. So this is a kidney 
well, a picture of not a real kidney. And then this here is that huge growth of cells, uncontrolled cell division, a bunch of cells just growing, right? Um, so if you look at it like this, it's probably stage four, it's huge growth. But if you look at it on a cell level, okay, this is what's happening, regular healthy cells. Okay, normal cells go here. And then here, super crazy cell division. And if you look at the size, they're even like ugly, bigger, and just lumpier, okay, than regular healthy cells. These are controlled. They look all pretty cool and in line. These are going crazy, okay? So this is uncontrolled cell division. That's or, um, formation of a tumor. Okay, so when this happens, when, this, when a, a cell or a body loses control of cell division, this tissue um, can um, usually become a tumor, but what ha this happens on the um, mutations that happen in the genetic code. So this is, we're talking about DNA, right? In the nucleus, this uh, cell division uh, messages or the cell division DNA that tells the cell to divide and when to divide, that genetic code is mutated. Therefore, because of mutations to that genetic code, it goes rogue, okay? And those things, um, can be caused by many, many different factors, okay? So genetic code goes bad or something happens to it, mutated. Genetic code can cause uncontrolled cell growth, which is going to be a tumor cancer. Primarily, okay, tumors happen um, at the site or in the place where the original cancer cells uh, went bad. So usually in the place where the cells that um, had that mutation, usually that's the starting point of the um, tumor or we call it primary tumors, right? Those are the places where um, the first cells went bad, okay? When you guys see or you hear the word um, metastasis, that just means, um, or metastasis, some people pronounce it metastasis. So when you hear like, oh, a tumor or a cancer metastasized or metastasis, that means that um, this tumor or this uh, uh, cancer cells, they moved out of the original place or they are no longer part of the primary tumor. They left that area and moved to other cells, other parts of the body. So here in this picture, you see primary cancer cells. Okay, they're gonna be in this large intestines, but they already got in the bloodstream and traveled all the way to the liver here. The liver here, we would say that this cancer or this tumor has metastasized because we find it now in other organs. So secondary cancer is going to be in the liver. So therefore, it metastasized from the large intestine to the liver. And you see the original primary tumors. We're going to, we're going to know that that's the primary because it's bigger because it was there for a while. So it keeps growing uncontrollably. And the secondary will be smaller. Okay. So um, when the cancer cells spread, they can form secondary tumors. So primary, this is where it all started, with original mutations to the cell division of machinery. Now this is secondary, okay? Um, cancer can occur in many different tissues, many different uh, forms. So pretty much anything that has DNA and uh, many, uh, blood flow to it can uh, basically get um, this tumor to be relocated or metastasized, okay? Um, and it can be caused by many different genetic and environmental conditions. So you can have a genetic, um, condition like something that was given to you through your biological parents or environmental conditions like skin cancer. A lot of times that's caused by obviously UV radiation to your skin cells and that UV radiation from the sun will damage the DNA in the nucleus of your skin cells and that DNA machinery then can go bad. And when that goes bad and we have mutations, it can cause that to become then a tumor, okay? Or, and eventually maybe a cancer, okay? So mutagens, this is a new vocab word. So mutagens, anything that is a mutagen is going to be a physical or biological agent that can modify or mutate, right? Mutagen, mutate the DNA. So they can be radiation, they can be chemical compounds, okay? Or even biological compounds, anything that can go into your DNA and mutate it or change it is going to be called a mutagen, okay? So you have normal parent DNA and you have a mutagen, okay? Like this is the chemical mutagen here, HNO2, that then changed one of your nucleotides. It was um, CG, 
DNA, alter DNA, gonna be CGA here, okay? But you guys see how this was a triangle, okay? And now this is a loop. So this right here looks more like a G now, not really like an A. So it's starting to have a mutation. And then you're gonna spread it, replication, so on and so forth, and then you have a G here, okay? A CG instead of a TA. So you had a mutation that altered DNA, okay? Many changes in a DNA um, are not harmful. So we have a bunch of mutations every day happening in our DNA, but many of them, or most of them, are not gonna be harmful to us. But if the mutation does affect the gene, okay, that is involved in a cell cycle, so controlling the cell cycle, or um, maybe keeping pace of the cell cycle, anything that has to do with the cell cycle, if the gene is involved in the cell cycle, if that gene is mutated, then a tumor can happen because it's gonna maybe then go into uncontrolled cell division, okay? Mutagens that cause cancer are also called carcinogens. So if anything that causes cancer, carcinogens are going to be cancer-causing agents, okay? So mutations that cause cancer are going to be called carcinogens. So mutagens, carcinogens, two words, okay? Mutations that can cause cancers are carcinogens, all right? So make sure you have those two words kind of in your, um, in your mind, and when you do your study guide, you're going to definitely need them. But the idea is um, that you can see that anything that's, that can mutate DNA especially genes that are involved in the cell cycle can result then in a tumor, okay? Carcinogens are cancer-causing agents that increase the changes or increases the, um, like how often you have mutations. So, um, and they also mutate the tumor uh, repressor genes. So those are going to be genes that stop tumors from happening. So you have this tumor suppressing genes in your body that actually prevent you from getting tumors, which is really cool. Um, and proto-onco genes, okay, there's going to be another word. We're not going to get into that, but those help your body not get cancer and not get um, tumors. But cancer-causing agents, okay, so carcinogens, are going to increase the changes of mutation. So they're going to mutate these, which are then these are helping our body not get cancer. So if you mutate them and mess them up, then your body's gonna most likely get cancer or be, uh, have a higher chance of getting cancer. So some of the things, radiation, viruses, and chemicals. So this is a virus that will uh, can cause cancer by mutating the repressor genes by putting its own DNA in there. That's a needle. The DNA will go from here through the needle into the cell. Um, smoking, right, chemicals. Um, and this picture here is very interesting because actually the charcoal things, like if this is meat, right, that came from an animal, if it's burned, if you see that burning charcoal um, uh, on the outside because you're barbecuing it or whatever, anything that's charcoal technically, that means that the cells, if it, this was once alive, if these are muscle cells, if this is a real meat um, link, those cells are burnt. That means the DNA is completely damaged. Um, you're not really cooking it. You burnt the cells, right? So that actually, the charcoal part of this can be a carcinogen. So I know it might be a surprise, but some people actually like to eat that stuff, but it is a carcinogen because you're ingesting damaged DNA, okay? Um, and those mutations can then um, kind of happen in your body because of that damage, okay? So, and radiation, UV radiation, right? We're talking about the sun. So viruses, chemicals, and UV radiation. Oncogenes are genes that have potential to cause cancer. So oncogenes, um, oncology that comes from cancer, they're gonna be genes that have potential to cause cancer. That doesn't mean they will, that means they have potential. Okay, so make sure you understand that. They can be genes that become altered, or once they're altered, those genes can then become very overexpressed. So once they uh, that becomes ultra, they become overexpressed, aka tumors. They're very rapidly going to be replicating. Um, so typically these oncogenes are gonna be involved somewhere in your cell cycle control, okay? So if we mess up the control of the cell cycle, we're gonna then have uncontrolled cell division, again, tumors and maybe cancer. So oncogenes, all right? Some oncogenes do prevent um, 
apoptosis. So some oncogenes can prevent apoptosis while others can promote cell to divide and replicate. So apoptosis means a cell pops itself or cell suicide. So sometimes cells recognize like, oh, I'm understanding that I'm going to become a tumor or a cancer cell. So they will apoptose themselves or they will commit cell suicide in a way to prevent the rest of the body from getting cancer or tumors, which is really cool. So not the death cell part, but the fact that it um, promotes a healthy body over itself. So it does kind of like a sacrifice because it realizes that it can cause your body harm in the long run. So the oncogenes can prevent apoptosis, meaning they will, even though the cell wants to rec recognize and wants to destroy itself, the oncogenes are not going to let it do that. Or it can, they can promote cell division and replication, aka uncontrolled cell death. I mean, uncontrolled cell division. So apoptosis, I defined it here. So program cell death that maintains integrity of tissue, meaning the cell will sacrifice itself to maintain integrity or to keep the body alive and not get cancer or tumor. Okay, so very interesting oncogenes. In recent years, there have been many studies um, that has um, showed a strong correlation. Okay, strong correlation between the incidence of cancer and those who smoke cigarettes. Okay, so we're talking about mostly lung cancer. Okay, so if you read any of these, you'll see a lot of correlation, a lot. Um, and I think I think now it makes more sense to people than before. But historically, people uh, didn't really believe this or they didn't know this. But scientists believe that um, this uh, these research uh, this data basically points to the fact that um, whatever's in this in the cigarettes, right, is going to be a carcinogenic substance or something that causes cancers. Okay, so something in there does this, but. The relative risk, if you look at this figure, relative risk of lung cancer according to duration intensity of smoking. So this was study was done on men. Um, so in your um, x-axis, you have years of smoking. So this is how many years they've smoked, right? Um, the y-axis, you have relative risk of getting cancer. So when they did this, right, then you have um, cigarettes per day. So this darker line is going to be um, less than 10 cigarettes per day, that's here. This lighter blue line is gonna be 10 to 19 cigarettes per day. And then the heavy smoking 20 plus per day is gonna be in this uh, royal blue. So as you see, as years of smoking, as years of smoking go up, meaning that it have been smoking for a long time, right? As the smoking years go up in their lifetime, the, you see the increase is slower and then a little bit more rapid, right? And then at a certain point, no matter which one you're on, it shoots up, okay? So because of the contents in the cigarettes, the risk of tumors and uh, cancers is gonna increase. So this is interesting data. Um, and then you see more um, data. This is showing a lung cancer, cigarette consumption, and how they're correlated. So the more cigarette consumption you see you have, the higher chance and the higher uh, occurrences or lung cancer deaths actually happen. Okay, so this is another 20 year lag time between smoking and cancer. So people are like, well, how long does it take? And they call this the 20 year lag. So if let's say you start smoking here, usually after about 20 years, you're gonna start seeing the effects. Okay, so take a look at this data here. It's very interesting. So um, a lot of times it is hard to collect this data because um, this is a long-term study, right? Like it takes years to study this, but there is a lag time between consumption and cancer occurring. So that's why it's not, it's not like you smoke one cigarette and then tomorrow you have lung cancer, right? Even though that might happen, but it's really rare. The idea is this is a long period of time of constantly putting a chemical or carcinogen in your body uh, in through the cigarette in your body, and then that will cause cancer. Um, and like it looked, like you can see here, it's a lag time, right? So that's why some people don't really worry about it. Um, but as more smoking happens for that person, um, it's going to start catching up, right? Um, there's also many genetic factors that can affect what happens too. So sometimes some people have a genetic, um, how do we say this? Um, um, they have a higher chance to get cancers because genetically they're more likely 
or they're more, um, um, how would I word that? They would be more susceptible to their genes uh, or the genes that they got through their biological parents. Okay, so regardless of the lag time though, there's always positive correlations in every study that I've seen and um, a lot of the studies that they talk about in IB, you see these correlations, even though it might be a little bit later because of the lag time, you'll start seeing this happen, okay? All right, so that's the end of our screen share. Um, so now I'm back on full screen, cool. All right, so that was um, notes and lecture, video lecture for section um, 1.6 C and D, all right? Now jump into the next part and you'll have all the sections done for your study guide. All right, deuce, have fun.